I'm David Beckman, and I'm the president of Bread for the World. We're a faith-based citizens movement against hunger. We organize people to weigh in with their members of Congress on issues that are important to hungry people in our country and around the world. And what are some of the uh, mechanisms that you, or methodologies that you use in order to accomplish your goals? Well, basically, we reach out to people who may pray for people in need uh, and ask them to follow a few specific issues in Congress that are important to people in need, whether in our own community or the other side of the world. Uh, U.S. government has a big impact on hungry and poor people, and they need to hear from people back home that we care about some of the specific things that they can do. Not that the government can solve all the problems, but uh, in fact we cannot achieve the progress that's possible against hunger in our country or around the world if the U.S. government is not actively involved, providing the framework in which all of us can do our part. Uh, that is within the United States. Uh, what's your advocacy efforts outside or to the World Bank, the, uh, uh, the UN, to other international organizations? Well, uh, the United States government, our government, we're the, it's the most powerful government in the history of the world, and it's a democracy. And so our government has an impact on the World Bank, on the United Nations, on other governments and systems around the world. I, I got a chance to go last year to Mozambique, to a really remote area. We were 100 miles from the nearest road. So, and there, there was a school there. There's been a school in, in, uh, in that little village of 40 mud houses for the last 10 years. That is because the U.S. government provided leadership in writing off the debts of some of the poorest countries over the last 10 years. So in fact, there are 30 million more African kids in school now than 10 years ago. And I met people way in this very remote place who are getting HIV AIDS medications funded by U.S. taxpayers. So our government has a, a, a very long reach for better and sometimes for worse. And it's important for those of us who care about hunger to use the power we have as U.S. citizens to change systems in ways that will make it easier for people to make a living. What have been the two or three biggest wins that your organization has had? Over the last 10 years, we've played, Bread for the World has played a crucial role in tripling development assistance to poor countries. Uh, and the impact of that can be most clearly seen in Africa. Ten years ago, there wasn't much good news coming out of Africa, but now there are 16 or 17 countries that have achieved economic growth, reduction in poverty, most of them are democracies, and the expansion of U.S. and European assistance has, has really helped. Um, also, over the last 10 years, we've helped to, to double nutrition assistance to poor people in this country. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, uh, we were really thrilled because uh, we've been campaigning to make U.S. foreign assistance more effective, to get more bang for our taxpayer dollars in foreign aid. And uh, we've been campaigning for a couple of years. Uh, two weeks ago, President Obama issued a directive to all the agencies of the federal government. So for the first time since John Kennedy, we, our government actually has a coherent policy about how we will uh, promote economic growth and poverty reduction in poor countries. We think it'll use tax dollars better, it'll help poor people around the world, it'll be good for our national security. Uh, before we start the interview, you were mentioning a recent study that uh, dealt with some of the poverty, uh, nutrition, health issues. Um, can you uh, uh, well, tell yeah, us about that? I'm really, I'm really excited because um, in 2007, the Gates Foundation, the World Bank, funded a whole big series of studies all over the world about the impact of various approaches to reducing malnutrition among kids. So we know now, better than we've ever known before, what kind of programs have the biggest impact on death and disability due to malnutrition. The basic insight is that to get the biggest bang for the buck, you, in, you invest in better nutrition in the first thousand days of life, from conception to two. I mean, when, once you say it, it's kind of obvious. Yep. But in fact, there are lots of nutrition programs around the world that are doing lots of other things. Um, there were some other really great insights that came out of those studies. And then over the last couple of years, we've been able to work with other people to get the 
big international agencies that support nutrition programs in poor countries, all on the same page, which has not been easy. This mm -hmm. is the World Bank, the World Health Organization, World Food Program, AID, our, our own bilateral uh, assistance agency. And then uh, just, so, so now there is a, a common program of what should be done to reduce malnutrition. And then I am really proud that Secretary of State Clinton, a couple of weeks ago, uh, in, at, at, a, at the big new UN meeting in New York, she convened a side meeting of government officials from all over the world to put now political wind behind the sails of this agreed program to reduce malnutrition among babies around the world. I think, you know, this is remarkable that in fact we, we moved from better knowledge to better coordinated technical advice and now political support for a program to reduce malnutrition among kids. I think over the next five or ten years, in fact, we will see uh, very substantial uh, improvements in in nutrition among babies around the world because of it. Great. Uh, obviously, there's going to be great changes in the world because of the changing climate, and I don't want to get into a yeah. uh, discussion, uh, you know, no, uh, about real. the uh, climate, but it's real. You know, I'm sure you, sure. having uh, traveled the world, have seen this. Uh, what is your organization looking 10, 20 years in the future trying to do now to prepare uh, the world, you know, for some of these uh, climate changes? It is real. I think many people, especially in the impact, is likely to be worse in the tropics. And uh, in many poor countries, people, it's hard to know, you know, if there's a weather change, is that because of global, of global warming or something else? But in countries like Bangladesh or Egypt, people are, are, think that it's real, it's now. There's likely to be widespread flooding, or in other countries there have been changes in rainfall that have reduced productivity in African agriculture. So um, the, the need is urgent. I, one th clear, th I'm, I, I'm excited that, I'm also pleased that um, our government is leading an effort to strengthen agriculture in poor countries, to help poor farmers around the world improve their productivity. And um, that's got to take into account what the climate is now, Hel you know, helping farmers produce a little bit more in in the climate that they're experiencing now and will be experiencing. I think investing more in rural roads, in good seeds, and fertilizers uh, so that farmers can be productive in a changing climate, uh, that's, that's a, a already a big step. But with this changing climate, we might have actually some of the biggest mass migrations right. of people uh, that we've the world has ever seen. You know, what's the mass migrations from wars will dwarf, be dwarfed, uh, by, uh, you know, some of the estimates on environmental mass migrations. What can we do to prepare for that? You know, it's uh, it seems like a daunting uh, task. Uh, right. I, I um, In the... In Obama's new uh, policy on global uh, development, uh, he said that the uh, U.S. government should focus, especially in three areas, health, where we're already doing a lot to deal with AIDS and malaria, hunger, where now, uh, just now we're really getting started in, a, in an international effort to strengthen farm productivity in poor countries. And then the third area that he identified that he wants to do more in is climate change helping poor countries get ready, adapt, uh, deal with uh, the challenge. That hasn't been rolled out yet, but um, for us as citizens, what's important is to, is to help make it happen. So uh, there are costs to this. I'm, I, I'm pleased, I think the administration's done a good job of mobilizing the whole world so it's not just the U.S. by ourselves. And the costs are not great. All the money that we spend on foreign aid that helps poor people amounts to 1% of the federal budget. But uh, for us to do our part to deal with problems like global health, global hunger, climate change takes some money. And Congress is not now on track to provide the money that the president's requested for next year for his World Hunger Initiative, for example. That comes back to, harkens on appropriations. So it comes back to Iowans 